Hello everyone, I'm Travis, and let's get Wanderlost. In this video, we're going to do our full ship tour of Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas. Symphony of the Seas is an Oasis-class cruise ship that made its maiden voyage in 2018. When Symphony of the Seas first launched, it was the largest cruise ship in the entire world. It has since been passed by Wonder of the Seas and the newest ship from Royal Caribbean, Icon of the Seas. Symphony of the Seas weighs 228,000 gross tons, has 18 decks and a maximum passenger capacity of 6,700 people. Symphony of the Seas is currently sailing to the Caribbean from ports like Cape Liberty, New York, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Miami, Florida. And occasionally, Symphony of the Seas does some Western Mediterranean cruise itineraries from Barcelona, Spain, and Rome, Italy. That's enough of the random facts and trivia about Symphony of the Seas, let's get on with the tour! We'll start in the main shopping and entertainment district of Symphony of the Seas, the Royal Promenade. The Royal Promenade spans decks 5 and 6 through the center of the ship. Starting on deck 6 near the back of the ship, the first thing you'll run into is the Shore Excursions Kiosk. These kiosks are where you can book your shore excursions, and there's even a desk if you have questions or need some ideas. Next to the Shore Excursion Kiosks is the Focus Camera and Photo Store. If you have a photo package or you had somebody take some pictures of you on board the ship, this is where you can select them, print them out, and send them to yourself. It's also where you can get accessories and cameras so you can take that perfect picture for your cruise. And if you wanted professional photos taken of you and your family on your cruise vacation, you can head over to Picture This, the portrait studio. On the opposite side of Deck 6, you'll find the Loyalty Desk. This is where you can get information and help with your Crown and Anchor status and your Crown and Anchor points. Next to the Loyalty Desk is one of the bars that's on almost every single one of Royal Caribbean ships, the Schooner Bar. The Schooner Bar is known for its old-fashioned cocktails, live piano music, and this is also where they do the trivia contest at. Now we'll head down to Deck 5, the main area of the Royal Promenade. Near the back of the ship on Deck 5, you'll see the port and shopping desk. This is where you can get information on shopping and things to do in the ports that you'll be visiting. Next to the port and shopping desk is the Voom Internet Desk. This is where you can sign up for Voom Internet and get information on how much it costs. And similar to Deck 6, there are shore excursion kiosks on Deck 5. 
If you need help with your shore excursions, you will have to go back up to Deck 6 and speak to somebody at that kiosk. If you've ever wanted a robot to make your drink, you're in luck because we have the Bionic Bar right here on the promenade. Simply tap your C-Pass card on one of the kiosks, select your mocktail or cocktail, and one of these KUKA arm robots will make your drink. Or you can just people watch and I guess robot watch while you watch people order and robots make their drinks. As we walk towards the front of the ship, the first store we'll come to is The Collection. The Collection is essentially a purse and accessory store where you can get your designer purses and accessories. The next space that we come to is Next Cruise, and this is where you can book your next cruise. Royal Caribbean offers special deals when you book your next cruise on your current cruise. These special deals include a lower deposit, onboard credit, and some discount. If you didn't want to talk to somebody at the next cruise desk, you can actually go into the Royal Caribbean app and reserve the next cruise promo by putting down a deposit and then calling when you get home. The first food venue that we come to is Sorrento's Pizza, a personal favorite of mine. Sorrento's Pizza is complimentary, which means it's included with your cruise fare. This is also one of the locations of the Coke Freestyle machines that you'll use with your soda or refreshment or even your premium drink package. I like to go to Sorrento's Pizza late at night after a show to grab some food before going back to the room. After Sorrento's Pizza is Regalia the Jewelry Store. The first bar that we come to on the Royal Promenade is Bolero's. Bolero's is a Royal Caribbean staple and is the Latin bar aboard Symphony of the Seas. This is where you can learn how to salsa dance, listen to Latin music, and of course get some really good cocktails. And as we swing back around and head towards the front of the ship, we'll run into On Air, the karaoke bar aboard Symphony of the Seas. You can catch me singing 505 or Star Treatment by the Arctic Monkeys in this bar. What song are you singing? And if you didn't know, Symphony of the Seas has its own Starbucks location located next to the gigantic piece of art near the front of the ship. 
Two things to know is that they have their own personalized Starbucks mugs for Symphony of the Seas. And unfortunately, Starbucks is not included in any of the drink or coffee packages. And if you're looking for the duty-free shops, you have Solera Beauty and Port Merchants, which are located just after Starbucks. Unfortunately, if you are buying alcohol at the duty-free shop, Royal Caribbean will hold it until the last day of the cruise when you can pick it up when you're getting off the ship. Copper and Kettle is the Irish pub aboard Symphony of the Seas. This is where you can get a really good Guinness or some other type of alcohol that you're looking for. They do not serve food like some of the Quantum class ships, but it's still a great place to hang out and watch the parade or just people watch on the promenade. The Royal Caribbean shop is where you can pick up any of your Royal Caribbean or Symphony of the Seas branded merchandise. They do different sales like 2 for 20 on t-shirts and a few other really good deals so make sure you check it out and pick up a magnet or a souvenir for your trip home. Royal Caribbean always has some sort of car on the Royal Promenade. On Symphony of the Seas, it's this really unique piece of art, which is a crushed Volkswagen Beetle. Cafe Promenade is another food location on the Royal Promenade. This is where you can get snacks and desserts, your coffee, hot chocolate, and teas, and if you really like good coffee, this is where you would get your specialty coffees like your iced lattes or mochas or any of those sort of things. Next to Cafe Promenade is Guest Services. This is where you would go if you have a problem or if you just like to complain. That was obviously a joke. If you notice this weird elevator thing in the center of the Royal Promenade, this is the Rising Tide Bar. It is an elevator bar that goes between the Royal Promenade and Central Park, which is above the Royal Promenade. It's a bar. You can order some drinks there. And to round out the Royal Promenade, you have Regalia Watches, which is your watch store where you can buy Rolexes and other premium watch brands. Now let's head back up to Deck 6 to check out the Boardwalk. The Boardwalk is an outdoor space that is themed to the turn of the century amusement parks and Boardwalk. One of the major dining venues on the boardwalk is Playmaker Sports Bar. If you're worried about missing the big game while you're on your cruise, don't worry. Playmakers has a ton of TVs and shows a ton of sports throughout the day. Not only is Playmakers a bar, but it's also a food venue where you can actually order food. It is part of the specialty dining of Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas, but the food is actually pretty reasonable if you don't have a dining package. I, for one, like the chicken tenders, and they cost around 4 or $5. Playmakers is also the location of the arcade on the boardwalk. The other location for an arcade on Symphony of the Seas is up on the pool deck. 
inside the Challenger's arcade. As we continue to walk towards the back of the ship, you'll see the ending of the Ultimate Abyss slide. The Ultimate Abyss is the fastest way to get from the pool deck all the way down to the boardwalk. And the biggest venue on the boardwalk is the Aqua Theater. This is where shows like Hero and Aqua Nation take place. Make sure you get to the Aqua Theater early to make sure you get a great seat. And as a tip, if you sit in the first three rows, you will definitely get wet. On each side of the Aqua Theater, there's actually a set of stairs that leads down to the Deck 5 jogging track. So if you're leaving one of the Aqua Theater shows and you want to quickly get to the other side of the ship, that's going to be your fastest way to get there. If you're feeling adventurous and daring, there's actually two rock climbing walls on each side of the boardwalk. How quickly can you ring the bell? Next to the other rock climbing wall, there's actually a little playground for children. I mean, it's made for kids, but adults can enjoy it too. There's no age restriction that I know of. The other big food venue on the boardwalk is Johnny Rockets. Johnny Rockets specializes in hamburgers, french fries, and milkshakes part of the specialty dining program, but if you didn't know, you can actually have breakfast there, and breakfast is complimentary. It's the best breakfast on the ship. One of the key features of the boardwalk is the carousel. It is actually included in your cruise fare, so you can ride it as many times as you like. My favorite animal on the carousel is the giraffe. The Surf Shack sells beach related and beach themed merchandise. Sugar Beach is a great place to go for ice cream, candy, and these adorable stuffed animals. Be mindful, the ice cream and sundaes at Sugar Beach are an additional charge. And the last venue on the boardwalk is Boardwalk Doghouse, which is a complimentary dining option that specializes in hot dogs and sausages. We're now going to head up to Deck 8 to check out Central Park. 
Central Park is an outdoor neighborhood aboard Symphony of the Seas that is themed to a city park. Out here you'll find bars, restaurants, some shopping, and a chill place to relax. Chop's Grill is a specialty dining restaurant that's on just about every Royal Caribbean ship. It's the Steakhouse aboard Symphony of the Seas. Next to Chop's Grills is the outdoor bar called the Trellis Bar. The complimentary dining option on Central Park is the Park Cafe. The Park Cafe serves breakfast, they have salads and sandwiches, and the specialty food from the Park Cafe is their take on a beef on wax sandwich. As a side note, on an Oasis class ship, if you ever do guaranteed balcony, there's a very good chance you're going to get a, a neighborhood balcony, which overlooks the Central Park area or the boardwalk. So if you look up on this tour of Central Park, you'll see the balconies, and that's typically what you'll have if you do a guaranteed balcony. On the opposite side of Central Park is Jamie's Italian. This is a specialty dining restaurant that serves Italian food from Chef Jamie Oliver. We have yet to try Jamie's Italian, so if you have tried it, let us know how it is. As you head towards the front of the ship, you'll find Vintages. This is a wine bar part of the specialty dining program. They specialize in wine and small plates. Central Park does have some shopping, there's some luxury stores located directly across from Vintages near the front of the ship.
As an Easter egg or a scavenger hunt or whatever you'd like to call it, there are four of these scuba statues located around Symphony of the Seas. Can you find all four of them? We did. And as a random bit of trivia, these big round things that are on each side of Central Park are actually the ventilation for the fire system for the Royal Promenade. So if there's a fire on Royal Promenade or some sort of uh, emergency where they have to turn on the ventilation system, those things actually open up and have gigantic exhaust fans in them. We saw that on Wonder of the Seas back in 2022. And as we head to the back of the ship, you'll find 150 Central Park. 150 Central Park is also part of the specialty dining program, and it's actually our favorite specialty dining restaurant aboard any of the Royal Caribbean ships. We ate here for my birthday, and it was amazing. Try the venison. It was great. <music> We're now going to leave Central Park and head down to Deck 4 and head to the Royal Theatre. The Royal Theatre is the main entertainment venue aboard Symphony of the Seas. It is a two-story theater where all of your stage shows take place, including Hairspray, Flight, all of your headliner acts, and even the comedy show at the very end of your cruise. Royal Caribbean actually allows you to make reservations for your favorite shows before you even get on the ship. About 30 days before your sail date, you'll receive an email to go into the app or the website to actually make reservations for each one of the shows that you want to see. But don't worry if you don't get a reservation, there are always standby lines that you can join at showtime when you're on the ship. Both Hairspray and Flight are excellent stage shows aboard Symphony of the Seas. Make sure you check out Flight. There are some really cool props in that show including the Wright Brothers plane flying over the audience. We really enjoyed it. We think you should check it out as well. Our favorite place to sit in the Royal Theater is up in the balcony on either one of the sides. We just like the view from up there and there's usually less people if you're into that sort of thing. Also on deck four is Studio B. Studio B is best known for being the ice rink on Symphony of the Seas. This is where you'll find two different ice shows. The first one is 1977. The second one is Ice Skate. Both of them are actually pretty good. I like Ice Skate more than 1977, but I think you should check both of them out. You can also skate on the ice during special sessions during your cruise. They also use this venue for Crazy Quest and a few other game shows. There's plenty to do on Symphony of the Seas.
Royal Caribbean is actually turning their jazz clubs on deck four into a non-smoking casino. So be on the lookout for that. They were in the process of doing that while we were on our cruise. Next to the former jazz club is the Diamond Club. This is where Diamond and above Crown and Anchor Society members can go for cocktail hour and a few other things. We're almost there. We just need one more cruise. Across from the Diamond Club is the Attic. This is the main comedy club aboard Symphony of the Seas. This is also where you'll find the bingo when they do bingo. On the wall of the attic, there's actually a dad joke. I actually laughed way too hard reading that sign. Leaving Studio B, as you walk towards the front of the ship, you'll find the Park West Art Studio. This is where all the art will be displayed for the art auctions. You can check them out on your way to the casino. It's a lot of the same stuff that you'll find on most of the Royal Caribbean ships. Let us know what your favorite piece of artwork that you may have purchased on one of your Royal Caribbean cruises in the comments section below. As we continue on deck four, we'll find ourselves in the casino. There are plenty of table games and slot machines to get your gambling fix on your cruise. Make sure you sign up for Casino Royale Rewards so you can possibly earn a free cruise after you gamble a certain amount. There is smoking in the main casino, but like I said earlier, they are working on making a non-smoking room for the casino which is up front over by Studio B and near the Royal Theater. The hallway that leads from the casino back up to the front of deck four usually has some really cool artwork. Make sure you check it out. I know on one of the ships it's like petri dishes. On Symphony of the Seas it looks like you're in a crystal cavern. At the back of the ship on deck four is Azumi Sushi and Hibachi. This is obviously the sushi in a hibachi specialty dining restaurant aboard Symphony of the Seas. It's also one of our favorite restaurants from Royal Caribbean. Uh, they do a la carte and prefix style meals. Make sure you check it out. 
the hibachi does have a service charge even if you have the ultimate dining package so be aware of that on deck 16 at the very front of the ship you'll find another specialty dining restaurant this one is hooked seafood Hooked is the best place to get lobster aboard Symphony of the Seas, and it's one of our favorite specialty dining restaurants. Make sure you try it out on your cruise. On deck 12, at the back of the ship overlooking the boardwalk is Wonderland. Wonderland is also a specialty dining restaurant. It is actually themed to Alice in Wonderland. They are best known for their whimsical and unique take on their menu. We tried Wonderland aboard Wonder of the Seas back in 2022. It is something that we believe any Royal Caribbean cruiser should try at least once to see if you like it. It's definitely a unique experience. On decks 8 and 9 is a two-story entertainment venue called Dazzles. Dazzles is known for live music and dancing. It's also a host for some of the game shows that are aboard Symphony of the Seas. It's also one of those venues that you can actually rent out. I've heard of some weddings taking place in Dazzles with this amazing view of the boardwalk. The main dining room is on decks 3, 4, and 5. The main dining room has different menus for each night of your cruise that are themed to different styles of food. There's French night, Caribbean night, Mexican night, Italian night, and the welcome aboard menu. There's basically something for everyone on every night of your cruise. We really like the decor inside the main dining room. It's much better than the American icon, silk and those other styles that they were trying on some of the older ships in the Royal Caribbean fleet, it's still not as pretty as Odyssey. Odyssey's probably got the best looking main dining room on any ship inside Royal Caribbean. You can check out our ship tour for Odyssey of the Seas on our channel. We also had a Greek Isle cruise aboard Odyssey of the Seas, and we do some detailing of that as well.
If you're staying in a suite, you can't miss Coastal Kitchen. Coastal Kitchen is a specialty dining restaurant just for sweet guests. We ate there on our cruise on Odyssey of the Seas and it was just amazing. Make sure you try it out if you're staying in a suite. The Suite Lounge is also on deck 17 next to Coastal Kitchen. The Suite Lounge is for any guest staying in a Sky or Star class suite. If you're staying in a junior suite, unfortunately, you don't have access to this area. The Windjammer on Symphony of the Seas is located on deck 16, and to get up there you have to take the musical stairs. What song can you play while walking up the stairs? The Windjammer is the buffet aboard Symphony of the Seas. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and has a wide variety of different foods you can try. We recommend getting to the Windjammer either right when they open or right before they close as tables and chairs fill up quickly with the number of people that are on this ship. And remember, be a good cruise passenger and make sure you washy-washy before you grab your food. The Windjammer has the Coke Freestyle machines on each side of the Windjammer. This is another place where you can refill your Coke Freestyle cups if you have the soda, the refreshment, or the premium drink package. Continuing on deck 16, let's check out the pool deck. There are several bars located on the pool deck. The first one that we're coming up to is the mast bar. Thank you. 
Also on deck 16 is the Sweet Sun deck. This is for Sky, Star, and Pinnacle Club members. This spot right here on deck 16 it actually gives you a really good view of the water slides, especially the toilet bowl, where you can actually watch people struggle to get all the way around. Alright, let's head down to deck 15 to check out the rest of the pool deck. One thing to remember is the Royal Caribbean does not allow you to hold or reserve deck chairs. So if you want to get up really early and throw your towels and stuff on a chair and hopefully it'll still be there, the pool attendants will actually throw that stuff overboard so you'll actually lose it. I'm just kidding. They'll just put it over by the towel station basically in a lost and found. Don't reserve chairs unless you're actually actively in the pool. Symphony of the Seas has several different types of pools, including a beach pool, a regular pool, and a kiddie pool area. Which one's your favorite? At the front of the ship on deck 15, there's actually two jacuzzis on each side of the ship. They kind of cantilever over the edge and give some really amazing views of the ocean. We absolutely love the Perfect Storm water slides. It's one of our favorite activities to do on the ship.
Symphony of the Seas doesn't have the lime and coconut like some of the newer ships or the, some of the ships that went through the amplification remodels, but it does have a really good bar right next to the pool. If you're looking for soft serve ice cream, it's located on deck 15 right before El Loco Fresh. As we head towards the back of the ship on deck 15, you'll find El Loco Fresh. This is a complimentary dining venue that serves Mexican food. El Loco Fresh also has one of the Coke Freestyle machines that you would use to refill your Coke Freestyle cup if you have a refreshment, soda, or premium drink package. They serve quesadillas and burritos, you can make your own tacos and nachos. The food at El Loco Fresh is pretty good, we've enjoyed it on just about every ship we've been on. At the back of the ship, you'll find the sports zone. This includes the basketball and tennis court, the flow riders, the ultimate abyss slide, and the mini golf course. The back of the ship also has some of the best views of anywhere on the ship. We like to come up here right at sunset or sunrise to get some of the best views you can get anywhere on the planet. Are you brave enough to go down the ultimate abyss slide? We were. It's actually a lot of fun, and it's the fastest way to go down to the boardwalk. Don't worry if you're looking for a drink or a specialty cocktail, there's a bar at the back of the ship as well called the Wipeout Bar.
Another activity that you can do if you're brave enough is the zip line. The zip line goes right across the boardwalk area and it's definitely scary. We have never tried it because we're just big chickens. There is a teens only club called Fuel and it's located right next to El Loco Fresh. If you're looking to do some scuba diving, they have a Patty Dive Center located also on Deck 15. As we head up all the way towards the front of the ship, we'll find the Solarium. This is an adults only area of the pool deck and it's actually recently changed to 18 plus. The solarium has a bar, a hot tub, and plenty of areas to relax. It doesn't have a pool like some of the other Royal Caribbean ships, but it's still an amazing place to kind of sit back, relax, and chill and take in the view on your Royal Caribbean cruise. One of the really cool things about the solarium are the outdoor spaces above the bridge. These areas provide some of the best views on the ship. Just be careful when you go out here because it's really windy when the ship is moving.
Attached to the solarium is the Solarium Bistro, another complimentary dining venue. If you were to do Chef's Table aboard Symphony of the Seas, the main meal would actually take place here in the Solarium Bistro. Those chairs that look like bird cages, that's exactly where it happens. That's the table, that's the Chef's Table. As we head back towards the back of the ship on Deck 15, we have Challenger's Video Arcade, which is the arcade, or at least one of the arcades, aboard Symphony of the Seas. The other one is in Playmakers down on the boardwalk. If you're ever on the ship and you're missing some basic necessities like toothpaste or something very similar to that, you can head down to Unbox, which is right next to the arcade on Deck 15. This is all the vending machines aboard Symphony of the Seas. They have everything from your basic necessities all the way to Pokemon cards. Next up, let's talk about Adventure Ocean, which is pretty much where all the kid activities are located on Symphony of the Seas. Adventure Ocean is designed for children from 6 months of age all the way up to 11, and there's different rooms and different types of activities depending on what age they are. Adventure Ocean is a great place for kids to go during the day while their parents are doing other things aboard the ship. Please be mindful that there is a charge for children under the age of 3, and this charge changes depending on what time of day it is. Adventure Ocean even has its own movie theater. At the time that we were walking through here, they were actually playing a Spider-Man movie. Adventure Ocean is actually separated by ages, so depending on how old your child is, they'll be into one of three or four categories. Like Voyagers goes from ages 9 to 11, and the activities are kind of curtailed to those ages. Maybe it's just a big kid inside of me, but I saw the science lab and I definitely wanted to spend the afternoon in there. Please let me play with the volcano and the other science experiments. On the first night, or the first day of every single cruise aboard Royal Caribbean, you can actually do an open house through all of the Adventure Ocean areas. You can ask questions, see what the activities are, and basically make sure that Adventure Ocean is right for your children. And if you're curious just to see what Adventure Ocean is, and you don't have kids like me and Nicole, you can just take a stroll through it and kind of see all the cool playgrounds and different activities there are for the kids on board.
Do you like escape rooms and puzzles? Well, you're in luck because Symphony of the Seas has its own escape room, which is called Escape the Rubicon. We've never done one of the escape rooms aboard any of the Royal Caribbean ships. If you have, let us know how it is in the comment section below. Continuing with the kid theme, over on deck 15 over by the sport zone is the living room, which is a teens only space. The living room and the outdoor section called the back deck are made for teens, well, basically older kids from 12 to 17 years of age. And in this space, there are tons of games, video games, activities, all that sort of thing that are basically made for teens aboard the ship. Now after all of that cruise food and lounging around, you're probably going to want to do some exercise. To start off, Symphony of the Seas has a jogging track and it's on deck 5. The jogging tracks on the Oasis class ships are some of our favorite places to go because it is closer to the water and just look at the view. The jogging track goes all the way around the ship including behind the aqua theater and uh, through a tunnel over by the gym. Our favorite place on the jogging track is actually at the back of the ship where you can see the wake and it's pretty unobstructed when it comes to the view and is just spectacular especially in early morning or in the evening. Over by the stairs near the back of the ship is typically where the pet relief station is. It's usually underneath those stairs right there. There were no dogs on this cruise, so there was no pet relief station set up. As a side note, those stairs also lead up to the aqua theater. So if you're leaving the aqua theater, you just come down to the jogging track and you can actually get to the other places of the ship a little bit easier and avoid all the crowds. And if you're curious where the shuffleboard courts are aboard Symphony of the Seas, they're also down here on the jogging track on these little, I guess they're jut outs or cutouts. You can definitely play some shuffleboard and on the other side of the ship is the ping pong table. And through this tunnel, you're actually directly underneath the gym, and these stairs through this really wide door lead right up to the gym. Speaking of the gym, Vitality at Sea is the spa and fitness center. The Vitality Cafe is actually a really good place to get some smoothies, coffee, and other healthy-ish drinks. Uh, a lot of these drinks are actually included in your drink package if you have the refreshment or the deluxe drink package. 
The smoothies are actually really good and make a decent breakfast if you need something quick and on the go. The Vitality Spa is basically where you would go to get all of your spa treatments, your massages, your, your beauty salon, all that sort of thing that you would do on a cruise. And in the way back is the actual gym, which is fully stocked with a ton of gym equipment. Just about anything you could possibly want is located in this gym. Symphony of the Seas also offers a ton of different types of classes through the gym, including spin and aerobics. There's pretty much something here for everyone. So that's it. That's our full ship tour of the amazing Symphony of the Seas. If you have any questions regarding this incredible ship from Royal Caribbean, please leave them in the comments section below. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe.